You're listening to my WorldNet Daily exclusive audio article. Today's WorldNet exclusive audio article is entitled, Even During a Pandemic, Governments Can't Do With Less. I think it was Rush Limbaugh who long ago said that no matter what happens, no matter the situation, no matter what the economy looks like or how many are suffering, the government will never go without. They will never cut back or offer relief. No matter what happens around them, they will always insist that you pay your taxes. When times are tough, private sector companies will extend payment terms, lower prices, do whatever they have to do to survive, but to also do what they can so their customers may survive. The real American patriots are those who risk losing everything, but on their own terms, not the government's. Despite the plight of small business during the government-imposed crisis, quote, lawmakers in nine leftists, I added that, states, are proposing higher taxes on the wealthy to help fill growing budget holes from the coronavirus pandemic, and the list is likely to grow, according to a legislative group, unquote. There is never a thought of cutting back, cutting the budget, cutting a few programs, nothing, maybe taking a pay cut themselves. It must be nice to be so insulated from anything resembling a conscience. Pain for thee, but not for me. But just who are these wealthy? A lot of these so-called wealthy are the aforementioned small business owners and entrepreneurs. Government hacks and the mainstream media portray the wealthy as some homogeneous agglomeration of top-hatted monopoly barons. However, we know this couldn't be further from the truth. Many of the wealthy are our next-door neighbors, who work ridiculous hours building and maintaining their businesses. They put their heart, soul, and every dime they have into them. And for what? Only to have our malevolent state and local overlords force them into closure, and in many cases, ruin. And for those who have been able to hang on by a thread, they are rewarded with potential tax increases. That's gratitude for you. Like Rush said, government can never go without or even get by with less. But it only gets worse. As we know, despite political posturing, tax increases are never reserved for the wealthy alone. During this pandemic, some companies have had the ability to close their offices and still remain viable by having their employees work remotely from home. The employee has no say in it, but it beats being let go. However, many employees don't think of this as an advantage at all. They don't wish to work from home, but again, it's better than being unemployed. Yet recently, the geniuses at Deutsche Bank, a bank headquartered in quasi-democratic socialist Germany and in true redistributionist fashion, suggest that a 5% tax be instituted in America for the privilege of working remotely. Wow, what a great idea. Government forces people and businesses into lockdown. Having no other choice, businesses that are able send their employees to work from home. There's no option other than the unemployment line. And for that privilege of spending every hour of every day stuck at home, they'll get to pay an additional tax. What's next? The Bank of China suggesting that cities and states impose a 5% remote learning privilege tax for every child forced out of school? Thank you for listening.